Hello, 154 Biolab. So today we are going to be doing a, um, the first of our vertebrate dissections. We are going to be looking at um, the anatomy of a frog, okay, to represent the phylum chordata and specifically um, uh, the subphylum vertebrata, okay? So what we have here are two American bullfrogs, Lithobates catesbianus. So first thing I wanna point out with the external anatomy is how to distinguish a male from a female. Okay, here on the left we have a male, and here on the right we have a female. That's my left and right, not your left and right. Um, right, so one of the most obvious differences, in my opinion, is looking at what you might call the ear. Okay, now this structure is called the tympanic membrane. Be sure to be following along on page 98 in your lab manuals. All right, the tympanic membrane on the male bullfrog is significantly larger than the tympanic membrane on a female bullfrog. Okay, so that's definitely something you wanna be aware of when distinguishing between whether you have a male or female bullfrog, one of the first characteristics you could look at is this tympanic membrane. That is essentially an external eardrum, okay? Another way that you could tell is by looking at their thumbs, all right? Very often males will have enlarged thumbs relative to the females that helps them grip the females during um, copulation, which in amphibians is called amplexus. All right? Great, so now that we have uh, how to determine uh, the sex of the bullfrog using those external characteristics out of the way, we're going to get rid of our female, we're going to focus on the male because it's bigger and juicier and we can see these things a little bit more easily. All right? So, first we have the eyes. That should be pretty obvious. But the eyes are covered by a clear uh, membrane which you can just see kind of the edge of here along the bottom edge, that will move over the eyeball. And so they'll put this over their eyeball when they're swimming, for example, and it still allows them to see. It's kind of like a goggle, if you will. And this is called the nictitating membrane, okay? Nictitating membrane. Next, looking at the face, we have the nares, okay? Those are the nostrils of the bullfrog. And now let's look at um, some internal features associated with the mouth, okay? So in order to do this, it's going to get a little weird. You have to kind of snap the jaw open. Okay, so there we go. Now that we have the jaw open, it exposes several structures that we can look at. The first of these are the maxillary teeth on the um, upper surface of the, um, this, the, uh, the jaw, okay, the upper jaw. You'll notice that it has these very fine little, almost kind of sandpapery-like bumps, all right? These are the maxillary teeth. Okay, and the maxilla is what comprises your top jaw as well. All right. Um, then, just behind the maxillary teeth, okay, we have another pair of, of bumps. Okay, these two bumps are called the vomerine teeth. All right, the vomerine teeth. Okay, here we have the, uh, the uh, openings for the nares, okay, the nostrils. And then on the floor of the mouth, we have the tongue. Now, interestingly, uh, bullfrogs have their tongues attached at the front, where you, for example, have your tongue attached from the back, and that tongue will just kind of flop out, and that's how they capture prey, okay? Looking way inside the mouth, we can get a look at some other structures. The first is this large kind of opening at the back of the throat. That is the esophagus, all right? So bullfrogs are voracious predators. They'll eat anything that they could swallow and they'll, you would be surprised at the kinds of things that they could swallow or can swallow, okay? In addition to that, we have some holes. Hold on, give me just a moment here. We should have some holes. Okay, well, first of all, we have the eustachian tubes. Okay, these are a pair of uh, holes on either side of the head, just behind the eyes, lined up right with the tympanic membrane. You have eustachian tubes too. Okay, these are these air tubes that help regulate pressure in your um, ears. And then on the floor of the mouth, we have another series of holes, which I can't quite find in this specimen, called. Um, uh, those are the openings for the vocal sac, okay? So this sac here on the, um, 
the chin of the frog will inflate and males will use that to call uh, for females. Okay. <clears throat> In addition to that, we also have uh, the cloaca. Okay, the cloaca is the opening at the back end of the frog where they release waste, for example. And that should satisfy everything that we need for the external anatomy of the frog. Now, let's take a look at some musculature. Okay, so again, you have a list of muscles on page uh, 98, and you have a diagram outlining those muscles on page um, 100 and 101. Now, we can look at these muscles on the, uh, the upper surface, the top surface, what's called the dorsal surface, and the ventral surface, okay? Let's start with the dorsal surface, the dorsal surface being on the upper side of the frog, okay? So working from the front and our way back, the first things we have, okay, we have our tympanic membranes here. Then we have uh, these distinct lobes right here, okay? These are the latissimus dorsi, all right? The latissimus dorsi. Next, we have these large muscles flanking the abdomen, okay, known as the external obliques. Coming a little bit farther down, we have one of my favorite frog muscles, the gluteus, okay? The gluteus are these distinct lumps right here where you would call the hip of the frog, okay? Next, we come to the legs. Frogs have these big, strong jumping legs and, you know, a lot of powerful musculature associated with that. So a lot of the muscles that we're going to learn about are going to be associated with the legs. All right. One of the largest of these are this, um, what are called the triceps femoris. Okay. So these are really powerful uh, extensor muscles that help stretch out the leg of the frog. Okay. And provides a lot of that um, impetus for the jump, if you will. Okay. Next, going a bit farther down um, along the... Um, uh, the fore back leg, okay, we have what's called the, um, the peroneus, all right, the peroneus. And then we have the Achilles tendon. And the Achilles tendon is attached to another muscle that we're going to talk about here on the uh, ventral anatomy of the frog. Oh, and I almost forgot, here we also have another large leg muscle, uh, the semimembranosus. Okay, the semimembranosus. So we have triceps femoris, semimembranosus. All right? Let's now move on to the ventral side. Okay, uh, one muscle that we have here on the underside of the chin that helps them um, uh, depress the, the floor of their mouth is called the uh, mylohyoid. All right, the mylohyoid. And then moving down, we begin to get into the muscles of the chest. We have uh, the adeltoids, okay? These are sort of thin muscles here associated with the um, uh, the upper arm. Then we have the pectoralis muscles, okay? This is just, just like our human, you know, pecs associated with the chest, okay? Next we have um, the rectus abdominis. And again, these are just like your abs, your abdominal muscles, all right? The rectus abdominis. And then we have this distinct... Um, separation of connective tissue right here that kind of splits the erectus abdominis into these two columns uh, and that is called the linea alba all right now we get to the underside of the leg and this is probably where the musculature is a little bit uh is the most complicated okay but i like to remember the acronym gas so think about the frog farts from the cloaca and we have g a s okay so we have the uh, gracilis major okay we have the adductor magnus, all right, which is this kind of fine triangle right in here, which you can see here, all right, and then finally on the outside, we have the sartorius, okay, so gris, um, gracilis major, okay, adductor magnus, and sartorius. We also have a thinner muscle on the way outside of the uh, leg called the gracilis minor. Okay, so G, G, A, S, gracilis minor, uh, gracilis major, sar uh, adductor magnus, and the sartorius, all right? And then our final muscle, which is associated with the Achilles tendon, is what's called the gastronemius, okay? The gastronemius. I know it's a weird-looking word, but it's really not that bad. Just 
gastronemius, okay, kind of ignore the C, the C is silent. And that's attached, anchored by the Achilles tendon. All right, so that concludes the um, external and muscular anatomy of the frog.